Okay, good morning everybody. I'm happy to have all of you here joined in this webinar. Um, I'm going to get started now. So um, again, really excited to have you here and I'm excited to talk about Google Places. So I'm going to, get, I'm going to cover the basic sign-up process to add and edit a listing and we'll talk briefly about bulk uploads. And then we'll talk more about your place page, what it looks like for users externally. And then lastly, just a quick troubleshooting tip. Um, there's a lot to cover about Google Places, so if there are things that we don't get to today, um, we'll be sending out a survey form where you can express interest in other topics, and we'll schedule more webinars to go into more detail um, into, into these other topics. Okay, so let's get started. First, I want to talk about some of our exciting features that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, first up is a screenshot of a compartment that appears on a business's place page. You can find out what others are saying about a specific aspect of a business, say the price, the service, or the infamous deep dish pizza from all over the web. What we do is we look for pages that talk about places and analyze the content on those pages that express a sentiment, so a positive or negative comment about that place. And then we'll display snippets of the sentiment to help you discover the best sources of information about this specific topic of interest. The color bars quickly show you how the business rates on each feature. And then if you want to know more about a certain aspect, you can visit the source of the review and read the entire review. So our goal here with what people are saying about is to give users a glimpse of feedback that this business has received. Next up is a recent feature accessible through your Google Places account. It's called Post to Your Place Page. This recent feature allows business owners to post announcements or updates to their listings place page. This allows for a more real-time method for a business owner to connect with users through short announcements. Some of the great things that you can announce are free chips and guac before 7 p.m. or we're closed this Friday for restocking our inventory, things like that. And once you post this update, it will appear on your business's place page within minutes. Our newest feature that I'm really happy to talk about is service areas. We realized that not all businesses serve customers from a brick and mortar storefront, and so to best serve these types of businesses, we recently introduced the ability to set service areas. So in geographical terms, you specify a region or a neighborhood where you're willing to travel to serve customers. And we'll talk more about service areas later on. Last up is Street View. Uh, most of you are probably already familiar with Street View imagery, but it's always po worth pointing out because our imagery collections are continually expanding. It's becoming a really nifty tool for users to check out a destination before they ever get there, whether it's a big family vacation to Hawaii or even just familiarizing yourself with public parking options near a restaurant you're going to. It's also useful to know that if we have Street View imagery for your business's address, We'll show it on the place page. For service area businesses who choose to hide their address, we will not show any Street View imagery. So now that I've highlighted some features that I'm really excited about, let's get focused on what you all specifically are here for, business listings on Google. Every business, including most of yours, has a place on Google. Now let's walk through the steps that users take to find you. So, Let's pretend I'm trying to find a birthday present for my husband. He always loves the clothes at American Apparel, so maybe I should try to pick a t-shirt up for him in San Francisco this weekend when I head up. I'll start my search on Google.com. Since I know what I'm looking for, I'll do a pretty narrow search for American Apparel San Francisco. I can see from the three path on Google that I have three good options. Let me just take a closer look at the map to check out what seems easiest to commute to. Now that I'm on maps, I can see more specifics about each store's location, major cross streets, and I can tell which freeways are closest to which stores. Oh, perfect. I see a location on Union Street. That's actually really convenient that it's close to Lombard. I'm kind of curious if they have their hours of operation available so let me check out more details about this store. 
I'll go ahead and click More Info to find out more. Now I'm on American Apparel's place page for the Union Street location. Hopefully you can see closely all of the great information that's provided on this business's place page. There are some great photos of the interior of the store, information about Wi-Fi, a note about an award they won, which is Label of the Year in 2008. Pretty awesome. I can also tell that this listing contains information directly from the business owner. You can see that above the image of the interior of the store, there is an owner verified listing stamp to show that this is a Google Places verified listing. Once I figure out where to go to buy my husband a shirt, I figure I may as well try and look nice and, and take it up a notch. So I decide I'll get my nails done after this. So I'm trying to figure out where to get my nails done. So I'll go through the steps of searching on Google, then to Maps, and then to check out the nail salon that happens to be nearby me in the Pacifica. Let me show you the nail salon's place page so you can see the difference between a business fully taking advantage of its online presence and that of a business whose online presence is pretty minimal. The first thing I want to point out here is that this listing isn't claimed or verified by the business owner. At first glance, this listing is pretty scarce. In my own personal experience, if I'm looking for a nail salon, I care about two things, what the hours are and if they take credit cards here. This is the kind of information that would influence me to bring my business to a location or not. And these simple things are really easy to add as the business owner. So definitely think about what kinds of information would be most relevant for your business type. Okay. So now that we've looked at the differences between a well-done, complete listing and an unclaimed listing, hopefully you understand why it's important to really take ownership of your online presence. So, why should business owners sign up for Google Places? First off, it's free. There's no cost to create a Google Places account. Secondly, take ownership of your online presence because more and more people are spending a lot of time online. For some businesses, an online presence is almost as important as having a physical storefront. Third, you are the best person to provide details and information about your business because you are the business owner. Ensure the correct information appears correctly on Google. The information that we get from various third parties isn't always correct and most certainly not as comprehensive as what you can provide. Lastly, you can get stats on how many people saw your business in the search results and how many times they clicked on it, in other words, impressions and actions. I'll show more about these stats in a slide later on. Now that you have some information about the benefits of Google Places, I want to get you started with a good tip for creating your actual Google Places account. To sign up for a Google Places account, you need a Google account. And a lot of people actually don't understand what a Google account is, so I'm going to take a second to explain it to you all. A Google account is a free account you create when you sign up for a Google product or service. It does not have to be a Gmail address. In fact, we actually prefer Google accounts that have the business name in the domain instead of Gmail accounts. And why, you're probably asking? It's because it helps us understand and verify that this account actually represents the business. Secondly, if you want more than one person to be editing your account, you'll need to share login information, including your password. So if you use your personal Gmail account, you'll be sharing the password for that. So I think the visual I have here gives a bit more insight. So for the business, Poly Engineering, an email address with Poly Eng Powder in the domain is a great signal. It's also not a personal address. 0702 Berinsky at AOL.com, well, that's just questionable for many reasons. Okay, so once you've decided which Google account you'd like to use to manage your Google Places listing, it's time to log in. Go to google.com slash places, you'll see this landing page. Choose Add New Business. There's another option right below for uploading data files if you manage more than 10 locations, and I'll cover that briefly after I walk you through all of these steps coming up. So go ahead and click Add New Business. 
So you'll see a similar page to this to add your business listing information. So hopefully this looks familiar to some of you who've already done this. So next I'm going to walk you step by step through each field to provide guidance on how to input your information. And for those of you who manage, uh, who manage business locations through bulk uploads, a lot of this information is actually really relevant, um, even though you're adding the listings in a spreadsheet. So still pay attention. This first line here seems like it should be really obvious, right? Your company slash organization. This is really important. You must represent your business online the same as it is in the real world. So the business I'm entering here is Poly Engineering. This is the business title on my letterhead and on the sign. So this is what I should put on Google. An inappropriate title here would be something like Poly Engineering, colon, sandblasting, powder coating on metal, rust prevention, and more. That's not my company letterhead, nor would it even fit on there, so it shouldn't be on my Google listing. So I hope this makes sense to you all. Let's continue down the sign up flow. Next up is street address. It's crucial that you put the correct street address here for two reasons. One, you want customers, right? Then give the correct address so we put the map marker in the correct location. Secondly, we need to verify that the business actually exists here. So if you're a home-based business and you're concerned about your address showing, or if there's simply no way businesses, uh, no way customers can come to you, so if you operate a mobile service, you'll be able to hide your address later. Since you can later hide your address, don't use a PO box and don't use an intersection or street name in place of a real address. Again, this is really important. Okay, let's continue down to phone number. On the phone number, make sure you provide the most local phone number that is available. Be careful of the format here. You want to make sure you input numbers only. And my classic example is when I'm staying at a hotel. If I leave my wallet at the hotel and I need to see if housekeeping picked it up, I need the phone number of that hotel's front desk. If I look up the hotel and find a 1-800 reservation number, I'm going to be sent on a wild goose chase. So the moral of the story is give the phone number out of that location. And if you want to include that 1-800 number, the reservation line, you can do this in an alternative phone field. So next up is email address. This is an optional field. Uh, only include an email address here if you have a publicly available email address. And don't give your Google email address unless you're prepared to actually receive emails here. Okay, let's continue. Website is another optional field. However, it's a great way to drive people to your business's website if you have one. The description field allows you to provide users with the most helpful information relevant to this business. Especially if your business name isn't very descriptive, the description lets you go into more details. So, for instance, Poly Engineering is kind of an obscure title of a business I wouldn't really know what it was if it weren't a family business. So I'm going to use the description field to explain what exactly Poly Engineering is and what we do. The key takeaway here, provide quality, readable descriptions that you want to show up on your place page. Okay, so now we're going to talk about categories. Every business listing must have at least one Google suggested category. How do you get a Google suggested category? Just start typing the first few letters of the category you would use to describe your business. You'll see some suggestions come up. So choose the one that best describes your business. After you've chosen one Google category, you can enter up to four more customized categories. So if the Google category you choose isn't as narrow as your business type, you can use a customized category to get more granular. For the powder coating business, at least one of the categories to describe this business was found by Google. I added a few more to make sure I encompass every service that this business offers. All right, so we're done entering the basic information here. We are about halfway done. At this point, there are two steps left. So we have optional information 
and PIN verification to confirm that you're actually the owner of the listing. Look for the Next button below the Categories section. Once you click Next, you may or may not see a screen that looks like this, but as you can see here, there are two different buttons. One is Claim Listing, two is Add Listing. Based on the information you added on the previous screen, Google searches for a business that matches what you have entered. It is common that we will surface your business here. If we show you a business that matches, go ahead and click Claim Listing. Even if the information in what we show you doesn't exactly match, you'll have the chance to edit it. If what we show you as a potential match is totally incorrect, you should add listing. This means that the information you provide to Google is brand new and doesn't match anything we've already found. So once you choose whether or not you'll be claiming an existing listing or adding your business as a new listing to Google, you will be prompted to continue editing optional information. So next step, is a really exciting feature, service areas. To determine if your business is a service area business, ask yourself, do all customers come to me or do I ever travel to customers? If there's ever a time when you travel or deliver items to a customer, then you should specify this through service areas and location settings. The reason for these settings is so that customers can find out whether or not you will travel to their locations. So when you click Yes, the default settings will enable a service area of 20 miles from whatever city center you want to enter. If you aren't sure about how far away Sacramento is and your business is in San Francisco, play around with the mileage and hit Update Preview to see what is accurate. If you serve only specific neighborhoods or specific cities, you can also specify these by entering a variety of location information, such as postal code, city state, or even a neighborhood. Let's check out the next slide to see how that works. So here you can see I've entered SF Bay Area and also San Jose. Essentially, I will travel as far north as what looks like Roner Park in the North Bay, and as far south as San Jose, and then everything in between. Each time you enter a new area, the polygon will update on the map. So the last step here is to decide whether or not you want to hide your address. On the next slide, I'll cover that. Okay, so below the option to enable service areas is a checkbox that says, do not show my business address on my map listing. Hiding your business address is perfect for home-based businesses or businesses who are strictly mobile. When you update this setting, your marker will appear as a circle on maps, and users, can see its and users cannot see its precise location. So at this point, we've already covered how to add information to a lot of required fields. Now let's walk through some of the additional attributes you can specify for your business listing. This is just a screenshot of some of the additional details you can add to your listing. So I'm going to move right to the next slide. First, we have hours of operation. This is pretty self-explanatory, but think of how incredibly useful this is to users. Remember my slide with the nail salon? I wanted to know the opening and closing hours of that nail salon before I attempted to go there. If I can confirm online that one place is open and I'm unsure about another, I'm going to go to the nail salon, which told me it's open at that time. The other cool thing with hours of operation is that you can split up your hours in the day. So if you're a restaurant, specify what your lunch and dinner hours are, or if you're a traditional boutique, for instance, and you close for lunch, you can specify this as well. The bottom line here is that customers will really appreciate you giving this information. The next field you can edit is the Payment Options field. This field is also really self-explanatory, so I'm just going to keep walking through. Next up is the option to add photos and videos to your listing. Each of these colorful additions to your place page are a great way to showcase whatever you want about your business. For a lot of businesses, showing the finished product or the interior of a business is really important. Specifically for my family business, which does powder coating on metal, 
People only care about the quality of the finished product. So I, choose to add, so I chose to add images of some of the work that the business has done. Let me walk you through some of the specifics for adding photos. So you can add up to 10 photos through your Places account. You can either upload them from your computer or just provide the URL of the image. If you have a website with photos, you can just grab the URL of those photos from your site, which is actually what I did. Okay, so let's move to videos. Videos are also a great way to spruce up your listing. Adding videos to your listing takes a few steps outside of the Google Places account unless you already uploaded your videos to YouTube. If your videos are already on YouTube, you simply have to paste the URL. If you haven't uploaded your videos to YouTube, you'll have to go to YouTube.com, create a YouTube account, then upload your video to YouTube. Once it's uploaded, you'll be able to copy the URL and paste it back in your Google Places account. So with videos, you can add up to five total. Okay, so we'll continue down to the next step of the field named Additional Details. Additional Details is a really flexible field for you to highlight whatever else you want to about your business that you think is relevant. So some suggested items, things like parking options, any special offerings. In this case, I wanted to highlight the types of products that the service offered by Poly Engineering will actually cover. You can add the date of your establishment of your business, any esteemed awards or recognition that your business won. And if you own a restaurant, this is also the section to highlight a menu or reservations URL. In order to do this, you have to label the first column menu and then enter the URL of where the menu lives. Do the same for reservations. And you want to make sure that you don't have any typos here. On the place page, the menu and reservations will appear as discrete links. Okay, at this point we filled out everything and it's time to verify the listing so that it goes live. As noted on the slide, verification is required to prove that you are in fact the business owner. In order for your listing to go live, you must verify the PIN by entering it into your account. So let's take a look at how to choose your verification options. In the U.S., there are two different options for PIN delivery, phone and postcard. Outside of the U.S., you may see an additional option of SMS. It is possible that you may not have all of the options available to you, and this is just depending on the information you provide for the listing. It's actually for your protection. So if you're claiming an existing business, you'll have to verify a piece of the information from that original business. In the next few, sl few slides, I'll talk more about each verification option. Phone verification, if it's available, is the quickest way to receive a PIN and activate your listing. Before you choose PIN delivery by phone, here's some information about the phone call you'll receive. So, as soon as you request phone verification, you're going to receive a phone call instantly. An automated phone system will read you a PIN. It's not a human that's going to call you. The phone hangs up almost immediately after delivery of your PIN, and that automated phone call should repeat it twice. Right after the phone call, you'll be prompted to enter the PIN in your Google Places account. So because of the circumstances of phone PIN delivery, there are a couple things I want to make sure you are all aware of. If nobody is available to answer the business phone or if the person picking up your business phone is not ready for the phone call, this won't work. If you have an automated phone system, a phone tree, or are just unavailable to take a call when prompted to verify, request a PIN via the mail option. Each time you request a phone call or a mailer, the PIN will change, so make sure you use the last PIN you requested. Sometimes mail may be a better option or the only option for delivery of your PIN, so let me explain a bit more about the mail option. If phone isn't available or won't work for your business, you can request a postcard that contains a PIN. Once you request this postcard, you'll have to wait about one to three weeks Postcards are sent through standard mail. When you request a postcard, you won't have the ability to request another one for a full seven days because likely your postcard is on the way, right? 
Also, please note that each time you request a new postcard or request a phone call, the PIN will change, so it's best to just be patient with this process. So once I've received my PIN by mail or through the phone call, I'll be able to enter it on the next slide. Enter your PIN here and voila, your listing appears on Google. But wait, there is still more you can do to enhance your listing. This slide is about coupons. Coupons are a great way to attract more users to your business. By clicking the Coupons tab in your Google Places account, you can easily create fully customizable coupons with expiration dates, limits, etc. You can also add images and even enable the coupon to show on the mobile network. It's a great way to attract new customers and satiate the ones you already have. So now that you've taken advantage of almost everything you can possibly edit, it's time to review how your account looks. If you change your opening hours or if you remodel the interior, update your hours and add new pictures. This is the kind of engagement and updating that we definitely encourage, although I want to make sure it's clear that you don't need to make changes unnecessarily in your account. Since we've talked about editing so much, especially if you make changes to your actual business, here's how you get back to edit the listing. So editing, clicking edit right here lets you update photos and videos, add a note about the local recognition, enable service areas, um, especially since it's a new functionality, some of you may not even be aware of it. Um, the delete button here should only be used if you close down your business. On the next few slides, I'll cover what some of the other terms and links in your account will do. Active means your listing is showing on that. There are several other statuses you may see in place of active. And for more information about these statuses, we have a really great glossary in our Help Center, which includes more information on what you should do if you see a specific status. So I would definitely encourage you to refer to that for more information. In the active column, you can see information about coupons and how many are active for each listing in particular. So here you can see I did create a coupon at one time for Poly Engineering, but it's not currently active, so I'm just going to assume here that I either paused it or I set it to expire before today. Here's the link to view your listing's place page. By clicking See Your Listing on Google Maps, you can see how all of your information appears on the place page exactly as any user will see it. In a few slides, I'll give you an overview of your listing's place page. If you're curious about your listing's performance on Google, you'll see a quick snapshot in the next slide. So impressions is how many times people see your listing, and actions is how many times users click on your listing. So this is just a tiny glimpse of information that's potentially available to you. The two links circled in red each direct you to view your listing's dashboard report. You can also click on the title of your business to view your report. The report is a custom view of the following information. How many people have viewed your listing? What actions people took? So did they get driving directions? Did they click on your website? Things like that. And then for driving directions specifically, you can see where users come from when they obtain driving directions to your business. This is really cool. All this data is incredibly useful to gauge how your listings how your listing is performing on Google. And of course, this is entirely free and accessible to all PIN verified users and bulk uploads that have been verified. And I'll, I'll go into that briefly when I talk about bulk uploads. So this is a sample of the dashboard, which every PIN verified listing and verified bulk listing have. From this page, you can gain valuable insight into the clicks that, uh, that people took on your listing. So you can see here how many times people clicked for more info, how many people clicked for driving directions, and how many people clicked to my website. You can also see here what the top search queries are when people uh, discovered your listing on that. So you can see here for poly engineering, the top query was powder coating, second was powder coat, third was sandblasting. Uh, so we'll show you the top 10 
So we won't show you every search query for when you're listing a peers, but we will give you this information, which is really useful. If people request driving directions to your business, you'll see an interactive map displaying what zip codes people originate from when requesting the, the driving directions. This is the interactive map that lets you visualize the top 10 zip codes of customers who obtain driving directions to your business. This type of information is super valuable, and we've heard stories from businesses who have even opened like a sister store in another region of the San Francisco Bay Area due to the high volume of customers from the East Bay. Okay, so that covers the basic intro level to your Google Places account. Once you've done everything you can through editing and pin verifying, your listing should appear correctly on maps. And voila, success. A lot of you may be part of large organizations where pin verifying listings isn't scalable because there are so many locations. So I do want to mention a few things about the alternative to, peer, to pin verifying your listings. So if your company has at least 10 locations, you can create a bulk upload to add your business locations. So this is our scalable solution uh, for business owners to still get their businesses on maps. So when you log into google.com slash places, you're going to want to choose upload a data file. You're going to want to follow the instructions here to create your bulk upload. And there are links on this page which, which takes you to very detailed instructions. A couple of things to keep in mind with your bulk uploads that differ from adding listings one by one. First of all, service areas aren't enabled yet for, for bulk uploads. We're working on this, though. Also, coupons, um, not enabled yet for bulk uploads. Also, you won't have access to dashboard stats unless you are a verified feed, which I'll explain on the next slide. So once you submit your bulk upload, you don't need to pin verify anything because remember, this is the scalable solution for adding your business listings to Google. But regular bulk uploads aren't guaranteed to show up correctly or even at all on Google. Because business owners with more than 10 locations should still be able to have a verified status, that owner verified listing that you saw on a place page, we do offer bulk upload verification. The method for verification of a bulk upload is to submit a contact form for our team to review. So before submitting this form, you have to meet the following requirements. First and foremost, you must be the business owner. This is why when you have the company name in your email domain, this is really helpful to us. You also need to have a Google Places account with a bulk upload already added. Don't submit this form if you haven't already uploaded it. Upload upload, excuse me, all of your locations. You also want to make sure that your data is accurate and up-to-date. Also, full compliance with our Google Places quality guidelines needs to be, definitely, you need to have read through these and make sure that all of your listings don't violate anything. So in other words, don't spam and represent your business online exactly as it is offline. Also, all businesses have on, must only have been submitted by a single user. We'll check to see if there are other Google Places accounts that are submitting data for the same location. Remember, there should only be one business owner per location. So once you submit this form, you should hear back in about a week. Once we confirm that we have verified your account, you can expect your verification to go into effect in about two weeks. Once you are verified, you'll notice the following an owner verified listing stamp on your listings, and dashboard statistics avail available for all of your listings. Regular bulk uploads will not have access to any of those dashboard statistics. So now at this point, we've successfully uploaded our file and requested bulk upload verification. So if there are folks that, uh, here who would like more detailed information about bulk uploads, please fill out our survey afterwards and express this interest so that we can schedule another webinar on this topic. I want to make sure we cover everything that you all have questions about. So we've covered a lot of internal account items now, so I'd like to switch gears to talk about your listings place page. Let's get started with a brief overview of your listings place page. 
So keep in mind that this overview of place page is applicable to all listings, not just yours. Your listing's place page won't look any different to you as a business owner than it does to any user who's looking at it. So first off, let's talk about the owner verified listing label. And I'll also mention some of the other labels you may see here. Owner verified listing label. This badge appears for listings that have been verified by the business owner. These listings have been updated and improved by their business owner so that the information about a business is as accurate as possible. And this applies to all listings, so remember that. You may see something, edit this place, that appears there. And if you see incorrect information appearing in the place name, phone number, home page, category, address, or marker location, you can actually edit this information directly in Maps. All you have to do is click Edit This Place at the top of the Place page to edit the business listing, make your changes, and then click Publish, and voila, you've made the edit. So if you see other, other listings on Maps that maybe have the wrong phone number and you know this um, because, you know, you're a local patron, you can actually help us correct um, the listing's information. If you don't see Edit This Place at the top of the place page, this means that it has been verified by the business owner and nobody except the business owner can edit it. Or you're not able to make edits in your country just yet, but don't worry, we're working hard to make this available in all countries. Another label you might see here is business owner with a question mark. This is another entry to be able to go in and claim your listing through your Google Places account. And you'll, you'll go through a lot of the steps that I already went through. So this is pretty much a, a similar screenshot as the previous slide, but I just want to talk about all the information that appears here, so the general information and details. Here you can find out all of the basic information about a business, from the address and phone number to how to get there by public transportation. And you're, if you're the business owner, remember again, you can update and edit this information in your places account. Now we're going to talk briefly about photos and videos. So photos and videos on the place page can come from a variety of sources across the web. And this is really important to remember. So business owners, you can, who, if you verify your business, you can upload up to 10 photos and videos to share with users. But other photos may appear here that come from various sources. And you can click on the photo, photo thumbnail to visit its source. So, as you can see on this screenshot, there aren't any from other sources. That's only because this business polyengineering is a very niche business. But a lot of other businesses do have photos that could come from anywhere like TripAdvisor.com, even someone's blog if they write, an, write a nice article about a, a hotel they stayed at and take pictures. Things like that could actually appear here and we'll always attribute the source. So just remember that. So reviews. These are reviews for a different business because Poly Engineering actually didn't have any. But I want to talk about reviews. Um, reviews come from two main sources. There's third-party reviews that we take from across the web, and there's also reviews written by Google Maps users. When the information on the third-party website, such as Yahoo or TripAdvisor, something like that, matches the information for a particular listing, Google associates third-party reviews with business listings. And that green URL next to each review indicates its actual source. And if the source is maps.google.com, then it's a review written on Google Maps. So reviewing a business is actually really easy as well. First off, you need to be sure you're signed into your Google account. And then from there, you click Write Review on the Place page. Once you've graded and reviewed the business, simply click the Save button. And this is a good pointer. Once you've left a review for a business, you can always go back and edit a review that you've previously left. A lot of people don't actually realize they can do this. So ranking of reviews in Google Maps is completely automated. We can't manually change the order of the individual reviews, even if you request it. So since we don't have a whole lot of time, I want to share a great resource with you all. This, uh, this link right here, and I'll send this around um, as a follow-up uh, with a link to this video and with all of the resources. Um, so it's a link to an interactive guide to your place page. 
And here with this interactive tour that you take, you basically can take a deep dive into every single thing that you could see on your place page. Okay, so let's take a moment to digest all this information. Take a deep breath. And I want to show you all one item which will hopefully help you out a ton, and it's called report a problem. On Google, sometimes there are other old verified listings whose information may also appear in your listing. If the information in your account appears correct, but there is wrong information on your place page, you should always use report a problem. This functionality basically lets you escalate a problem with a listing to Google to let us know about the issue. So the way you find report a problem, you look for the more link. Um, this is close to the business title and the address field. When you click more, you'll see send and report a problem. Click report a problem. You'll be prompted to choose what's actually wrong with the listing, and this is to help us fix and figure out what's going on here. Reporting a problem is available on U.S. listings and in the U.K. You can use this report link on any listing which you see in correct info, not just your own. In terms of when the issue would be resolved, we don't always make a specific fix for listings, but we do use the info to make large scalable changes overall. So our goal with Report a Problem is to improve the experience for everybody. Okay, so now that we've covered all the basic information for adding your listing, bulk uploads, and how to report issues you encounter, we're pretty much done. So I want to thank you all very, very much for attending this webinar.